Vince and Kathy Ryder from Church of the Holy Family in Enville. Together, we've been married for 122 years. We have 10 children, 21 grandchildren, and 11 great-grandchildren. We're speaking about the vocation to the sacrament of matrimony. I was married to John Colligan for 56 years. From the very beginning, we were active in the church, whether in our own parish or working in family life ministry or marriage encounter. I was married to Jean McGibney for 64 years. Even though I was not Catholic at the time of our marriage, I attended Mass with, with Jean and our children every Sunday. I was baptized Catholic when I was 36 years old and became involved in the charismatic renewal at that same time. I too was active in my parish for many years. When I retired, I volunteered to work for Habitat for Humanity. Kathy and I had both cared for our spouses through extended illnesses before they died. John had been dealing with cancer for many years and the last year of his life was especially difficult. Jean had multiple problems, including diseased kidneys, cancer, and dementia. I was a widow for several years when a friend invited me to join a prayer group at her parish. Vince had participated in this group for about 30 years, but hadn't been able to attend for the past two years because of Jean's illness. I had never met Vince, and I didn't know who he was, but we prayed for him and his wife every week. About three months after Jean, Jean died, I returned to the prayer group. As I walked in, I was facing Kathy, and I distinctly heard an inner voice very clearly, there she is, take care of her. I didn't hear anything, but it was obvious that a man whom everyone in the group knew and respected was back home with his friends. He seemed like a nice man who was also exhausted. I belonged to St. James Parish, but often attended daily Mass at a Holy Family. Now that he was able to do so, Vince also returned to daily Mass. A month later, Vince invited me to breakfast to talk about the prayer group. I agreed, and we spent two hours discussing the Holy Spirit. After that, we started having breakfast on an ongoing basis. We exchanged books and talked a lot about our faith in God and how God has been with us throughout our lives. I was struck by Vince's faith and his desire to help people. At a time when many are retiring to a life of leisure, he was doing home repairs for others, helping out at Transfiguration Monastery, and building gifts in his workshop for people he barely knew. I saw him as a kind and generous man, a really good man. Kathy had experienced the trauma of the murder of her oldest son when he was 21. Years later, her younger son took his own life. Yet she had no bitterness, no anger, no self-pity. She talked about how forgiveness and letting go of anger had helped her heal. I was struck by Kathy's faith, peace, and trust in God. After 64 years of marriage, I was alone and very lonely. After a year of breakfast and discussions about God, life, marriages, and family, I had a tremendous respect for Kathy. I thought I'd like to remarry, but Kathy was not interested. I was afraid to remarry. I didn't want to risk going through the pain of loving someone and losing them again. Also, a remarriage can be hard on the family. I didn't want to put my family through that. I expected to live alone for the rest of my life. We both agreed Sunday was the loneliest day. We decided to meet for Mass on Sunday morning and then go out for breakfast and maybe an afternoon drive. Kathy began to help me with some of my projects. There was a single mom with a large family who lived near us and I was working on fixing up her storage shed. I took Kathy up on her offer to help me paint it, we also took a few other projects. We both enjoyed working together. In late October, there was a fundraiser for Mercy House. Vince invited me to go, and we had a very nice evening. When he brought me back to my apartment, Vince asked me if I thought we had just had a first date. I responded, well, you asked me to go, you paid for the tickets, you picked me up, and you dropped me off. 
Yes, I'd call Anna a date. He immediately asked for a goodnight kiss as long as we were dating. That kiss changed everything. Vince began to talk more about marriage and I began to get nervous. It wasn't just my family I was concerned about, but I didn't know what my friends' reactions would be. Would I end up offending and alienating a lot of people? Besides, we're both in our 80s. People our age don't get married, they remain companions. Kathy was a hard sell. I needed to talk to someone I trusted who could help me sort things out. I made an appointment to a wonderful priest I'd known for years, Father Clarence Sirwanka. After I explained the situation, Father said, do you love her? I said, yes. He responded, then you should marry her. I replied, it's not that easy. She has a family and friends and a strong commitment to all of them. Father said, let me talk to her. Vince was excited when he arrived at my apartment that evening. As soon as I opened the door, he said, Guess what father said today? What? He said, get married. <laughs> really? He yes. said we should get married? Yes, yes. Oh, all right. Ha, it's easy for him to say. Did you tell him who you were talking about? Your name never came up. Well, it should have. Because he never would have said that if he'd known you were talking about me. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to talk to him and straighten this out. He knows me. We can get this together. So the following Monday, I called Father Sawanka. Father, I need to see you. That's great, he replied. When do you want to come? Well, how about this afternoon? He asked, well, do you mind telling me what you want to talk about? I replied, well, a man came to talk with you on Saturday about problems he was having with his lady friend. Father said, oh, yeah, a very fine man. I've known him for years. Are you a friend of his? Yes, I'm a friend. Wonderful, Father said. He really needs someone to talk to. As a matter of fact, I was thinking of having him call you. Would you be willing to talk with him? Father, I am not the solution to this man's problem. I'm his problem. I'm the lady friend. Oh, that's even more wonderful, Father responded. Yes, by all means, come out this afternoon. We had a long talk about a lot of things. And finally he asked, do you love Vince? Yes, I do. He's a wonderful man. Father said, then marry him. He added, if you think of your life as a book, God may be adding another chapter to the book of your life. The only question is, do you have enough trust in God to walk into that new chapter? That question was a game changer. I thought, yeah. Of course I can trust God. I then called my brother just to see what he had to say. He had met Vince and he encouraged me. That evening Vince proposed again and this time I said yes. We were both totally at peace and filled with joy at the same time. We got married a few months later. When asked why we didn't wait a while before marrying, we pointed out time is not on our side. Whatever we're going to do, we have to do it now. My fears were groundless. Our family has been wonderful. Our friends remain close and caring. The priests at both our parishes are very supportive. We've been married over two years. We pray together every morning and evening and go to daily mass and prayer group. The vocation to marriage is a sign of God's love in the world. We volunteer in our parish and community, trying to make people's lives a little less lonely. We hope we're helping to build God's kingdom. We are the writers, and that is our story.